Welcome to Talk in Scripture. Grab your Bible and get ready for a great study in the Word of God. We're live. We're live. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Talk in Scripture. My name is Gary, and I'm so thankful that you're joining me here tonight as I'm coming to you live from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. And what an absolutely gorgeous, stunning day it has been outside. And I'm sitting here looking out the window out into the backyard here and and uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous day outside. And I hope you had a nice day wherever you are too. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that winter is not over yet. But uh, I'll take a day in the 60s in East Tennessee on this last day of February over a day in the teens or a day in the 20s anytime. But uh, thank you, Lord, for just a fabulous, fabulous day outside. And uh, it's Monday, and it's the last day of, of February. And uh, due to some prior commitments and appointments, uh, that's why we're broadcasting tonight. And I'm thankful for those of you that are in the chat room tonight that uh, got together a day early so we can we can look at, at the Word of God. And tonight we're going to be in the book of Hebrews. And I don't know why, but the past few weeks, God has just been opening Hebrews up, and I've seen so much stuff that I think we need to apply to our lives. I know I need to apply to my life, and uh, I hope that you see that you need to apply these to your life as well. And uh, on our daily dose of inspiration broadcast, we've been studying out of the book of Hebrews. Now we're going into our third week, and I don't know if we'll finish the week in Hebrews, but uh, we got to wait and see the way that uh, God leads us here in that but uh, this is our second week in talking scripture looking in the book of hebrews and and i'm pretty certain that we'll be looking at it again next week too and uh, we're going to talk tonight on the subject of spiritual immaturity and uh the title of the broadcast is it's time to grow up and it's that's exactly right it's time for us to grow up and i think that was an issue that these people in this church the hebrew church was having and uh, remember I said last week that the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews was written to Christian Jews. And um, there was some false teachings that was getting into their church and into their into their lives. And, and they were falling victim to that. And uh, the writer of Hebrews is trying to refute those false teachings and show them that Jesus is the one and only way. And he is greater than anything from the Old Testament. And uh, we'll be in Hebrews chapter number 5 tonight, is where our study is going to be at. But I want to read the story as you're, as you're going there, that I found in Swindoll's ultimate book of illustrations and quotes, and it was originally published by Michael Green in his book, Illustrations for Biblical Preaching. And it's about grief, and uh, it seems that so many people are suffering from from death, the loss of a loved one, um, loss of a family member, whatever. And, uh, you know, sometimes grief is a little bit hard to bear. But listen to the story here. Dr. R.A. Torrey, founder of the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, lost his 12-year-old daughter in an accident. The funeral was on a rainy day. They stood there beside that hole in the ground, surrounded by loved ones. It was dark and it was dismal. Mrs. Torrey said to her husband, I am so glad Elizabeth is not in that box. Their grief went home with them that night as they tried to sleep. Dr. Torrey got up in the morning and went for a walk. A wave of grief broke over him anew. The loneliness of her absence, the terrible feeling, knowing they would never hear her laughter again, never see her face, never witness her growth. He couldn't take it, and he leaned up against the street light, and he looked up and began to pray. This is what he had experienced. And these are from the words of, of Dr. Torrey. He said, And just then, the fountain, the Holy Spirit, whom I had hid in my heart, broke forth with such power as I think I have never experienced before. And it was the most joyful moment I have ever known in my life. It was an unspeakably glorious thing. To have within you a fountain ever spring, springing up, springing up, springing up, ever springing up, 365 days in a year. Springing up under all circumstances. 
Isn't that just like God to be right there in our time of need? That's exactly right. It's just like God to be there in our time of need. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what grief that you are going through right now. But if you've given your life to Jesus, you have that spring, that well of living water. It's living inside you, just waiting to burst out. And you can experience great joy, just like Dr. Tori did. Let's pray, and then we're going to be in Hebrews chapter number 5 tonight. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this night, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and gather around your word, Father. And I just pray and ask that your spirit be here with us now, Lord. That you open our minds, that you open our hearts, Lord, so that we can hear from you. So we can understand your word tonight. And most importantly, Lord, so we can apply your word to our lives, Lord. Because this would just be a waste of time, God, for us to look into your word and walk away unchanged. In fact, James says that by doing that. And Father, I just pray now that, you're, that you guide our, our discussion, Lord. And I just ask that you forgive me where I failed you, Lord, and that you speak your words through me tonight. This is your time. Use it to bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. Hebrews chapter number 5 is where we're going to be at. And as you're turning there, I'm going to read one verse from a different spot. And it's Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 12. And that verse says, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Be not sloth, slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. These verses here, verse, Hebrews 6.12, perfectly summarize the main message of our text tonight, which is Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Israel wanted to go back to Egypt. And as a result, a whole generation had failed to inherit what God had promised. We, we looked at, these, at, at this topic last week, and we had discovered that, that Israel just, the people just didn't trust God. They've seen God move in, in mighty ways. They, have, um, they, they saw his miraculous getting them out of Egypt, and they failed. They still failed. To fully trust in Him, and and as we as we look at these verses tonight, Hebrews five verses eleven through fourteen, we're going to see here about spiritual immaturity. That whole generation of Israel had failed to inherit what God had promised. Was it God's fault? No, it wasn't. They failed to inherit what God had promised. They were safely delivered out of Egypt, but they never enjoyed the promised rest in Canaan. We as believers today, we need to be careful that we don't fall into the same thing, that we don't fall into the same, same trap that the nation of Israel had done, had fallen into. And the same word... The same word in, in chapter 5, verse 11, that is translated as dull, is translated slothful in chapter 6, in verse number 12, the verse that we had just looked at here. That same word that's translated as dull is translated as slothful in another spot, and it refers to a condition of laziness that prevents spiritual development. Let's make no mistake about this. Spiritual growth is something that's going to take work on our part. It's going to take work on God's part. But, but to grow spiritually means that we have to trust Him fully. It means we have to, to apply God's Word. It means we have to, to live God's Word. Here are some marks what we're going to look at tonight in these couple of verses here are some marks of spiritual immaturity. And hopefully, hopefully you don't have any of these marks found in your life. And if you do, I hope and pray that you 
seek to make things right. And earlier in chapter 5 here, and I really encourage you to take time and read in the book of Hebrews, let's make no mistake about this, that it is a difficult book to understand. And these... And, and, and some people have a terrible hard time with it. And I encourage you, as you're reading through the book of Hebrews, that you have a Bible commentary or a Bible dictionary there um, with you to help you understand the, the, the teachings of this book. Now, not just any Bible commentary, but make sure it is a, a good Bible-based commentary. And if you need help, um, selecting commentaries to help you in your study, you know, just send me an email, scripturelinks at gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy to to share with you the the things that I use. But anyway, in chapter 5, the writer here of Hebrews is telling us all about Jesus and about how he is our perfect high priest. Now remember, the Hebrews would have been familiar with the phrase high priest because that would have been the person that would have went into the innermost part of the, the tabernacle or the temple, the Holy of Holies, and offer up sacrifices for the sins of the nation. We see Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. He offered up that sacrifice once and for all. So there's no need for any other high priest to go into the throne room of God, which was what the Holy of Holies essentially was for the Old Testament tabernacle. There's no point in a, in a, in a high priest to go in there each week, each month, each year to offer up a sacrifice because that sacrifice has been done and it was done through the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. And if you look in the Gospels, and I wish I would have thought to look up the reference, I didn't. But in the Gospels, it teaches us that when Jesus had breathed his last breath on the cross and he gave up his ghost, that immediately the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple or the rest of the tabernacle was immediately torn in two. It was cut in half. It was, it was destroyed. Why? Because we don't need it anymore. We have access to the very throne room of God. Talking about you and I today, we have access to the very throne room of God because of that shed blood of Jesus. Can I get an amen in the chat room tonight? That's, that's some awesome stuff right there. Let's look here. Hebrew, and and as, you, as you look here at Hebrews chapter 5 and you get down here to verse number 11, the writer is saying, Of whom? We have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. He's referring back to the things he had just preached about and he had just taught about in verses 1 through 10 of chapter 5, in, in that he wanted to tell them more about Jesus and more about the deep things of Jesus and about his work as our high priest. But he says he can't do that because you're dull of hearing. Can you imagine somebody coming up to you and saying, you're dull of hearing? What would you do? You'd probably smack him in the head. But yet that's exactly what this writer did. He says, hey, I want to teach you some, some deep theological things about Jesus, but I can't because you're dull of hearing. You can't understand. Why? Because you're lazy and slothful. His readers were on a backwards slide. Maybe that's where we get the term backslidden from. They were on a backwards slide. They were drifting from the word. Look here at some warnings here in chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, in verse number 1. He writes, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Look at what he's saying here. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We've heard the word of God. We need to make sure that we don't drift from the word of God by forgetting what we've read. That's why it's so important when you're studying God's word and when you're reading God's word that you apply what it says to your life. You know, in James chapter chapter 1, and one of these weeks we're going to get back to our series and our study of the book of James, but in James chapter 1, matter of fact, it's just the next book over, let's, let's turn there, James chapter 1, 